Hello, it's Gem Games here once again, and in this video we're going to create the indicator for the grenade, so we can see it on the screen. So yeah, let's get started. And actually, we are going to fix this bug also. So let's do that first. So how we can do that? We want to go to the projectiles and to the grenade. And here in the grenade, let's select our scalable mesh. The problem is we have set collision to no collision. Now what we want to do, we want to set it to custom and we want to set all to ignore and then we want to set the shoot to block, world static to block and world dynamic to block. I want to set the shoot to block also because I think we should add a function that when we shoot the grenade it will explode. I don't know if it's like realistic but I think that's like a fun uh, function. But yeah, and now we have to change the collision enabled to uh, collision enabled query and physics like that. Now, when we compile, save, and we try to play, we don't get the error anymore. Okay, and if you didn't get the error in the first play, first place, you might not have a grenade on your level. So, add one and try and do the thing that I just did. But yeah. So let's start with the indicator. First, you want to go to the link in the description and you want to download this grenade indicator and arrow indicator. Okay, I just created them in Photoshop. And after that, you want to go to your resources icons and you want to create a new folder called indic indicators or something like that. Then let's import the files. Now let's open both of these files. Like this here. And first let's change the compression settings to user interface like that. And yep, and on the grenade, same thing, user interface. Okay, let's save, let's close, let's save, let's close. Okay. And now we actually, let's leave the grenade open and let's go to the HUD folder. And here on the HUD folder, let's do, uh, duplicate the W damage indicator. Let's duplicate it and let's call it W. Oh, not indicator one, but like W indicator. Okay, let's open it. We are going to use a lot of this same code but not everything so yeah uh, let's actually go to the designer first and here we have this indicator that is an image right now so what we want to do we actually want to delete this and we want to add a border because border is basically an image but you can add uh, stuff inside it you know you can add for example, an image inside it. And also it has some other things, but yeah. But now let's anchor it to the middle and let's set the alignment X to 0.5, alignment Y to 0.5. And here on the brush image, let's search for the arrow, arrow indicator. Now let's say 7, 12, 7, 12. But now let's change the size to 712 by 712 and let's reset this position X and Y. Okay, now you can see this indicator here. Now let's rename this border back to the indicator like that. Now what we want to do is we want to add an image. Let's move it to the indicator, so it's under the indicator. Now let's rename this to icon. Okay, and you want to check that both of these are variable. So is variable true and is variable true. Now this icon, what we want to do here is we want to center align horizontally and top align vertically. So it's there. Now let's change the brush to grenade indicator like this. 
Now we want to set the top padding to 120. I think that's pretty good. You can obviously use whatever you want. Now test 0, 0, 0, like that. So it's there. You can obviously move it to more up or like whatever you want. We have these as individual, uh, like this is, uh, these are not on the same because we want to be able to rotate the grenade. So it always is like this, even though the, this arrow rotates. So I will show you soon how we can do it. But now I will set this top padding back to 120 because I think that's the best. So the next thing that we want to do, we want to actually compile and save and let's go to the graph. And here on the event construct, what we want to do here, we want to actually delete everything from here, from the start, from the event construct, like this. Now what we want to do, we want to create a, actually, let's see, uh, let's call this, rename this actor ref to enemy, uh, sorry, enemy ref to actor ref. Okay, and let's delete this hit animation. Actually, we have to go to the designer to do that. We don't need it. Okay. Now, uh, 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 we have the damage source location, which is instance variable and explosion spawn. Now we have this actor ref. Now it is not actor anymore. Now we have to change the variable type to skeletal mesh component object reference. Like that. Because we are using skeletal mesh or as our uh, grenade. So, actor ref skeletal mesh. Now, what we want to do, we want to add a variable. This will be called radius, and the type will be float. Now, we want to add yet another one. This will be called, oh, sorry, I messed up my mic. Okay, I think it's pretty good. Uh, so, this will be called time. Now, let's make this instance editable. Exposition spawn, also the radius, instance editable, and exposition spawn. Now let's compile and save. Now on the event construct, we want to first delay. And the time or the duration will be this time. So this will basically be, be the time uh, before the grenade explodes. And it will be the time that this widget is active. So after this, let's add a remove from parent. Okay. Now here on event tick, what we want to do, we want to move this a little bit further. Here. We want to first get the actor ref. And we want to get world location. Now we want to set the damage source location. We want to set this every tick because uh, the grenade can roll on the ground and stuff like that. So we want to get the current position of the grenade, not the uh, first position, basically. So now we will get always its position. After that, let's connect this back to here. Now this indicator, we have this error here. Let's delete this indicator. Let's get the indicator back like this. So this is the border. Now we actually can connect it directly to here. If for some reason you cannot do this, you want to just set render transform angle like this. And we can actually do this. I will do it like that so you can see that it works. Now let's connect this back to the angle. Okay, so now we are, this is the code that sets the rotation for the arrow. But now we have a little problem if we try to do it like this. So let's actually compile, save, move this next to the grenade. 
Uh, let's do the grenade code first because I, I will show you one thing. So here on the grenade, after the add impulse that we have not, that is not yet doing anything, and before the delay, what we want to do, we first want to move this a little bit further. And now we want to create a widget. Create widget here. And this widget will be the W indicator. And from the return value, we want to add to viewport like this. And here, the owning player, we want to get player controller. Actor ref, we want to get our skeletal mesh. It should connect here. If it doesn't, then you have set uh, actor ref at uh, this variable type incorrectly. It should be a skeletal mesh component uh, actor reference. So uh, this blue one. Okay. Now damage source location. Actually, we don't have to set anything for that, and we don't actually even need to make it instance editable in this case. But let's actually leave it like that. So for if for some reason we have to do it like that, then yeah, let's leave it there. Don't let's not set anything to that. After that, the radius will be our radius. Uh, so basically this way uh, you can only see the widget on the screen when you can also take damage from it. So if you cannot see it, you cannot take damage not because they are uh, using the same radius variable here. And the time will be also the time. Like that. Now we want to compile, we want to save, and now if we play we can see the indicator on the screen, but actually I will have to do one thing here. Uh, on the grenade, let's set the time to something a little bit bigger, like 10. Now, when we move around the grenade, you can see the arrow is working, but the grenade is also turning, and that this is not looking good. At least I don't think so. You can use it like that if you want, but I don't like that. So how we can fix that? Let's first Actually, let's leave it like that. Here on the indi indicator, after set render transform angle, what we want to do is we want to get player character, then we want to get actor location, uh, we want to get to distance, then we want to get the damage source location, like this, and now what we want to do, let's actually align this first, we want to get the indicator, we want to set Render opacity. And let's connect this to. Actually, let's not connect it yet. We have to clamp the value or actually map it first. So map range clamped. Now we are getting the location. And we want to get the radius in the in range B. So to the maximum value. And in range A can be 0, and now 0 will be turned to 1, and the max radius will ter be turned to 0. So when we are near it, it will show it uh, like with render opacity of 1, and when we go near to the, uh, like further away from the grenade, it will slowly fade it away. And now after this, we want to set the rotation of the grenade icon. So we want to get the indicator. We want to get the transform, sorry, render, render transform angle. So we are getting the angle of the indicator. Then we want to multiply. Sorry, 
I cannot write today. But multiply, and we want to multiply it by minus one. So we are, we are basically turning it to negative number. Now we want to get our icon, and we want to set render transform angle. And now, if and when we set this angle to this indicator's angle multiplied by minus one, so by negative number of the indicator's angle, it will be turned directly upwards, like it will always stay on the same exact position. So now when we compile, we save and go to play, that should work. And it actually will work. As you can see, the grenade indicator is always turned the right way. And I died. But yeah, I actually think that was all for this video. If you like what you saw, please click the like button and subscribe for more. Hope you have a great day and see you on the next one.